What's going on everyone? Hope you're doing well. Today I want to do an unboxing video of my uh, first bee house, solitary bee house that uh, was purchased from crownbees.com. Uh, if you're not aware, uh, solitary bees are hiveless bees and they are significantly better pollinators than your average honeybee. And um, the, earlier this spring I put up my first couple of mason bee houses and I uh, believe I've had some really good success. Um, one of these future videos is going to be me hopefully harvesting some cocoons of adult mason bees. So I had such an interesting time and experience and really enjoyed the whole process that I decided to go ahead and upgrade uh, next spring uh, to another bee house. So I wanted to share uh, what I purchased and why I got uh, what I got and then uh, go from there. So anyway, here's the box and inside I have the bee house along with several other goodies. So first I'll take this out uh, along with the clay, uh, some papers, and this piece of plastic and move the box out of the way. All right, so first off, uh, I'm gonna show uh, what uh, the bee house looks like. So you can see crownbees.com. And if you are unfamiliar with solitary bees and mason bees, definitely check out crownbees.com as a great reference. And they have, they're a wonderful site and they seem to have a, a real desire to help uh, work with the bee population. Uh, said solitary bees, uh, like mason bees and leafcutter bees, they are much better pollinators than honeybees, and these are your local bees in your uh, in your backyard. And um, you know, it's, I was looking for a way how could I help the bee population a little bit, and came across these. These uh, the males don't sting, the females are very placid, and they uh, will rarely sting. So it's been a very educational uh, year for me, getting to learn more about these types of solitary bees. So um, anyway, I am going to do another video uh, showing some more details related to uh, the mason bees and what I've learned uh, over this year, along with some lessons learned and things I hope to change uh, in the spring. So anyway, this is the bee house. Um, it seems to be very, very well built, uh, good wood, and uh, you know, we have our little uh, hole that I'll be able to uh, put a screw in uh, once I uh, put it on the tree. And I'm going to have this facing south, southeast, I believe, to get some uh, morning sun, uh, but then still shade in the afternoon. So that way, when the adult bees are hatching from the cocoons uh, or coming out to start the next day, they'll get some nice uh, you know, early light to help warm them up. But then the heat of the day, uh, they'll have some shade. Um, down here is where I'm going to be putting the trays. You can see I got two different ones. But what I really liked about this roof area is I would be able to put some of the cocoons that I will hopefully harvest uh, up here. So I can have all the holes down here uh, for the tubes and for the nesting site down here and then be able to put the cocoons up top. So uh, very excited about that. Now the first house that I received had a bunch of bamboo that was glued to the back here. Uh, as I've learned uh, through through crownbees.com and uh, other sites, is a bamboo is very hard to open up to harvest any sort of uh, bees if that's what you're going to try to do, which I'm actually going to try to do later. So I'll see just how difficult it is. But then also, if um, with it being glued to the back, uh, back here, I could not, it's very difficult to remove the bamboo uh, at all. And uh, over the years of use over and over, uh, mold and, and uh, fungi and other pests may start taking over those bamboo and uh, doing unintentionally more harm, or uh, at least unintentionally from the human side, uh, more harm to the bees than good. And so um, I'm trying to migrate from the bamboo to uh, either reeds or more cardboard tips, or what I'm most excited about are these trays. And so you can see how uh, these are... Uh, these trays are strapped together uh, with rubber bands. I have a piece of cardboard on the back to kind of create a back for the for the mason bees. And you can see we have holes, uh, 24, I believe. Um, uh, so uh, the mason bees can actually burrow in, uh, put the mud caps on, uh, lay their eggs. And then in the fall, so a year from now, I'll be able to open up these trays, separate them, 
and easily harvest any of the cocoons and clear out any pests, anything like that. So very excited about being able to finally use a tray like this. I've been eyeing it for a while. And uh, so I'll be putting this out probably er, uh, maybe March or April, whenever it starts getting a little bit warmer here at my house. Now, along with the mason bees, the mason bees are a little bit bigger holes, but later on in the summer, I'm going to be putting out this tray as well. You can see the holes are a little bit smaller, so these will be for your leaf cutter bees. They, they come out in the summer, late summer, when the temperatures are a lot warmer. And so, same idea, I'll be able to harvest them uh, probably early spring of two years from now, I guess. Um, and just try to make sure that the quality of the cocoons are good as well as just making sure any sort of um, pests are removed, uh, etc. So those are the two trays that came with the, with the kit. I'm going to put that up here. Additionally, I got this uh, clay mixture. So with mason bees, uh, they will actually use mud to cap the ends of the of the holes uh, as well as in between cells where they will uh, place their babies um, as well they'll cover up holes uh, in, at the cap showing that this tube is full as well as individual cells after they lay an egg uh, in between eggs and they'll collect pollen like crazy and uh, etc and so they'll use this type of mud um, i was able to use some backyard mud i believe i just put it in a bucket with a little bit of water and I put a rock in there in case, uh, you know, it, it helps out the bees. And I did have some, uh, several mud capped uh, tubes or bamboo. So um, I was pleased with that. But this will give uh, the ideal consistency uh, with the research that's been done on mason bees. So looking forward to putting that, uh, mix that with some water and have a good consistency for the bees. Uh, have some paperwork as well. So this is just a quick overview instructions uh, on the you know, native solitary bee instructions from crown bees, um, how to place the uh, yeah, how to place the bee house, uh, where to do the nesting tubes, uh, what to do with the bees when. So pretty much a surefire way. Just kind of follow these, and uh, very very helpful. Uh, additionally, there is a native bee guide how to grow more food and flowers. So uh, compared to a honeybee, uh, the mason bee, the average mason bee or solitary bee, uh, is usually, I'd say at least 50 times more effective than a honeybee. And I know there's been a lot of buzz about uh, bees, especially honeybees in the news recently. And uh, solitary bees are also a, a species that could be focused on and since they are so much more placid don't have to require as much maintenance as a beehive I think uh, this was a wonderful thing to learn and experience uh, for me and my family and uh, so uh, like for example you know learning more about these and seeing how docile they are I was able to actually be you know feet or even inches I was able to be inches away from the bee house and you can see bees flying in and flying out. I'll do some footage um, showing of my old older bee house, which I do intend on using next year as well, just with some modifications. So uh, anyway, here's a native bee guide, uh, more about how to do the healthy bees with a calendar, um, pest diseases, etc., and what you can do and how to... Uh, you know, farm pollination, all, all sorts of different programs that uh, crownbees.com is uh, involved with. Additionally, I have this uh, plastic right here. So this is a code. So I have a little bee coupon uh, on how I can you know, buy some mason bees and different bees here. Uh, I also got a uh, Invite a Bee Plus. This is for mason bees. Um, and here's some reeds, actually, as well. So you can see those are about the same size as those original holes. But these are able to be uh, opened up. And there's also a little pheromone, I believe, in this uh, spray bottle that'll uh, be sort of an attractant to other mason bees. So I'll be doing that first thing. Um, in the in the early spring and same thing for the leaf cutter bees you can see how the holes are a little bit smaller but once again we have the pheromone or the scent that'll work for those after that we have a bee guard 
and this is sort of a net. So uh, over time, if I decide to harvest the mason bees or what I can do uh, after the bees have uh, pretty much ended, um, I could, or the season has ended for the mason bees, I can take this tray out and put it in this bee garden. This will keep pests and other uh, critters from getting into the tubes while the eggs grow into larvae and turn into adults. And then uh, lastly, we have uh, pretty much the label on how to do hiveless bee raising. And then this is called the humidity. And this is a way how I can take any of the cocoons I harvest from the mason bees, put them in here, and then store this in my refrigerator uh, over the winter. And uh, that is to help uh, maintain the quality of the cocoons, prevent them from uh, getting you know, attacked by pests or anything. So in the fall, the, the baby bees will uh, store up a lot of fat and then hibernate essentially over the winter. And the colder, the better, so long as it's above freezing uh, for their lack of need for uh, to use their fat stores. And so ideally between 35 degrees and 40 degrees is ideal for a mason bee and uh, a refrigerator can keep that temperature the same. Now, you can, if you don't have one of these, you can always put it in a shed or your garage. And um, but you know, the more consistent the temperature, the better for the bees. And um, you know, that way they'll be able to uh, stay uh, in hibernation if needed. Say you have a long, cold winter, um, they can hold out for a little bit longer. So anyway, I would put my cocoons in here, put a, a tablespoon or a tablespoon and a half of water about once a month just to keep humidity uh, in there. Be, since uh, a lot of refrigerators now have the anti-frost technology, a lot of the uh, humidity will be uh, sort of kept out. So uh, that's the idea behind the humidity. So anyway, uh, that is all that was in the kit. Um, here we go. There's once again, there's that house a little bit more. Um, Crownbeast.com. I'm not sponsored by them or anything like that, but I uh, have been using their website for a, uh, for a lot of information and research. They've been very responsive to any inquiries I've sent to them over their website or through Facebook. I joined their group. Um, if you're curious more about research uh, related to mason bees and native bees, and uh, there are a couple books I can uh, I highly recommend. One is Our Native Bees, and the other is Mason Bee Revolution. I'll put both of those books, uh, book links, in the description uh, for this video. And uh, as well as some of the other uh, items, if I can find them on Amazon, um, I'll put them uh, in the links as well, just for some ideas. But I definitely recommend checking out their website, supporting a great cause, and uh, just trying to make, an, uh, make a difference in the world with the bee population one backyard at a time. So this has been a wonderful experience, and I'm looking forward to next year. I'll be doing another video soon related to what I've done this year, what I've learned, and what I'm planning on doing for next year. This kit will definitely be heavily involved with, uh, with next year's uh, bee population video, and we'll go from there. But anyway, that's all for now. Goodbye, God bless, I'll see you soon.